So, what is up, Africana fam? I know I look a mess, but that's besides the point. We're not working on my hair today. Um, this is not going to be a hair slay today. Today is going to be our first class, aka the first episode of the Free Frontal Class 101. Okay, so today's video will be sponsored by Eunice Hair, and this is their 13 by 6 deep wave hair and the inches are 24 inches and I believe the density is 180 so this is how the hair was looking like all right so for my lovely beginners um just a little heads up I feel like if you want to make this um I guess this whole process of you doing your wig very foolproof I would suggest you buying a uh, pre-plucked as you guys can see this hair is already pre-plucked Meaning that we don't got no Elvis Presley hairline going on, y'all. Uh-uh. No thick hairlines at all. If you want to make this foolproof, I would suggest you getting a pre-plucked, already-made wig. Especially if you, if you do not know how to make your own wigs. Because making your own frontal wigs in itself can sometimes be a hit or a mess, especially if you're a beginner. So, like I said, today's first episode of the Free Frontal Class 101. We are going to learn how to bleach and pluck like a pro. Okay? So... First, we're going to start off with the bleaching process. So right now what I'm doing is I'm going to use my, uh, my mixer, a clean mixer, a bowl for your bleach. I personally like to use a whisk instead of the brush to mix um, my concoction of the developer and the bleach. More so because it, um, it kind of whisks it and it makes it more even without no lumps or bumps. And I like that better than the brush. I feel like overall you just get a better and seamless um, application of the bleach. Now, what's very, 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 very crucial for this bleaching process is your bleach and your developer, you guys. Honestly, um, I do have a fan fave when it comes to bleach. Um, unfortunately, I do not have that right now. Um, but this is also a very good brand. This is the Kaleida Colors from Clairol. And you can, you can get this from the beauty supply store. My ultimate favorite is the Blonde Door. Blonde Door is a little bit more expensive. So if you want to get pretty much the same results, but you know, for a cheaper price point, I would definitely suggest the Collider Colors. But I believe I pay like $10 to like $12 for this um, pretty decent sized uh, tube. And for the culture of it, to be honest, I just like to work with like same brand, um, you know like bleach and dye just so that again it goes hand in hand they were made for each other for it to be used and you get the best results so of course I'll be using my clear all professional pure white and 30 and 30 developer so again 30 developer not 40 30 and the reason why I say 30 is you get the time of it processing but it doesn't over process it too fast you don't want your wig to over process too fast you know you're not supposed to be dyeing your hair with 40 developer period but you know sometimes they be a little lazy be like I just want to you know have to make sure that this is nice and fast and everything to be for the developer but it's not really suggested more so because I feel like you won't get like an even come out like when it comes to the knots dying so usually when it comes to my front tools I will start off with two scoops of the bleach so legit here's one and then here is two all right now, when it comes to like my mixture, you want to go for a very thick consistency, and I'm going to show you guys how to get that. But one thing I would say is rule of thumb when it comes to doing, you know, the mixing, you know, pour it and mix as you go. Don't pour a whole bunch because you can't take it back. Go in increments, you guys. Make sure you go in increments. I'm just going to be pouring this amount. This should be good, okay? I'm going to go ahead and start mixing it. So again, you want to go on increments when you are bleaching your hair, you guys. Or just, you know, doing your concoction. As you guys can see, it's already getting too thick. So that means that we got to add more. And you're pretty much just eyeballing it, you know. Like, there's no exact measurements. Like, there's no one-to-one -one or two-to-one. Like, how, say, if you use, like, um, I guess, like, the Willow Charm toner. Like, you use two-to-one for the developer. There's no measurement when it comes to this, you know. I'm just gonna whisk it. Okay, as you guys can see, we have a nice creamy consistency going on. Alright, 
Now here's the test to see if you are ready or if you need to add a little bit more developer or a little bit more bleach powder. Okay, boom. So look, we're going to pick up our whisk. We're going to test it. You see that? It is not dripping whatsoever. But it's not dry either. So this is the kind of consistency you want. You want a pasty kind of consistency that takes a long time for it to drop without it being too dry. You know? So boom. This is the perfect consistency that we have for our bleach. And now we're going to move on to our bleaching process. All right now. So again, like I said, we're gonna try to make this as foolproof as possible. So right now what I'm gonna do, you see these little fray hairs that's in our way? We do not want that. So what I suggest you to do is to use your Gatsby Free Spray. This is our Gatsby Free Spray. You can find this from the beauty supply store or Amazon. And I'm gonna take my comb. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray the hairline. Alright. And then I'm just gonna use my comb and then just comb it down like that. Boom. You already see it. It's already looking neater than what it was before. Because again, well, a lot of these companies, they already come with the baby hair, so the baby hairs be out front so they can tell you, like, hey, I got the baby hairs for y'all, you know? So in order for you to push those baby hairs back, you're just gonna use your spray and use your comb and just kinda comb it back. You are already done. Look, all hairs are out the way. You wanna make sure that all hairs are out the way so you can avoid bleach getting onto unnecessary hair strands. It's not cute, you know? Okay, so now what you're going to need is a butter knife. Excuse the fact that I'm actually using an actual butter knife. But I'm only going to use it for bleach. I'm not going to use it to eat afterwards. Um, I usually use a plastic one, but I couldn't find one. And it's late outside, so we're going to suffice with this, okay? And then you also want to make sure that you have your gloves on deck. Protection is everything. Because I promise you guys, this stuff burns. And it's, it's going to end up getting on you. No matter how careful you are, somehow, some way, it always ends up getting on you. So now for my beginners... Honestly, your lap is going to be your best friend. I do not recommend ever trying to, um, let me put this back up. I would never recommend you trying to bleach a wig on a dome cap. Reason why I say that, I said dome cap, a dome head. The reason why I say that is because, listen, simple science, what goes up must come down. So if you have this upside down and you're putting the bleach on it, gravity is going to defy itself and it's the, the no matter how thick your bleach is, it's going to start crashing down because again, because of gravity. So honestly, you're going to have to try to maneuver with this, especially when it comes to a wig. It's easy to do when it's just a frontal alone because you're just able to lay it on a flat surface. Um, without you applying so much pressure on it, you know, so um, Yeah Just a little heads up you guys because I've tried this method before putting it on a dome head and All the time it never fails. I always end up getting over bleach knots and it's annoying and then you have to go in with black dye and no uh -uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Again, I'm trying to make this as foolproof as possible you guys so yes me personally, when it comes to um, bleaching my knots, I like to tackle the front part first because to be honest, that's what kind of really matters. The back part, it doesn't really matter more so because you can always use concealer to conceal it if it didn't bleach properly. And that's just only if it didn't bleach properly, you know? So boom. So I'm going to kind of hold it like this so you kind of have a clear view of how it looks. i try to zoom in. Okay, cool. Let me turn up the light too. Okay, so boom. This is how we're looking. So we're going to go ahead and take our concoction. Alright. And you want to make sure that you're doing this very, very gently, you guys. Very gently. And I only have it awkward like this because I want to show you guys. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have a very light hand 
when it comes to applying the bleach. Now this is a very weird angle but this is the only way I can really teach you. And to be honest, you can do this, um, you can hold it like this and do it this way more so because you get to see in the front how much um, bleach is, you know, being applied or if you're penetrating it a little too deep into the lace and it's starting to bleed. So you're able to fix it immediately before it starts processing. So even though this is an awkward position, I would suggest you actually doing this so you actually see what you're doing and, you know, not make any mistakes while doing it. And again, I'm just tackling the front first. Again, you want to make sure that you have a very, very light hand. And try not to apply too much product in one spot too because that could also cause um, the bleach to bleed into the hair. Again, this is not for um, the impatient hearted. You have to be very patient when it comes to this, especially if you're a beginner. Because again, you want to make sure this is foolproof as possible. And in all reality, you guys, you don't even necessarily have to bleach the entire frontal. Um, depending on what style you're doing. If you're doing a simple style, whether if it's like, you know, middle part, a side part, you could legit part out your part and then bleach the front and then wherever the part is. That's, you could legit just do that, you know? Especially if you bring a product, you know? And that's a little tip for like all my upcoming hairstyles as well. I'm trying to save product and stuff. But if your client does, you know, want to do multiple styles and you probably have to, you know, bleach the entire thing. But for now, I'm going to bleach the entire thing. That's just a little tip that I wanted to tell you guys, just in case if you were, um, I guess, in a rush, you know. And also another thing when it comes to bleaching, you always want to make sure that your bleach has either a violet or a blue undertone. You do not want no white bleach, you guys, because white bleach tends to make your hair very brassy, while the blue or the purple components have um, components that would, I guess, lessen the brassiness and tackle the brassiness as well. So it's like a two-in-one. But either way, I still go back in with the Shimmer Light Shampoo after I do that. And I'm going to show you guys the whole entire process after that. And I'm gonna, I'm just going to come back to you guys after I'm done. But I'm going to let this sit after I'm done for 30 minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and wash it out afterwards. Alright you guys, so it's not 30 minutes yet, but I just wanted to come back to tell you a couple of tips. So, um, when it comes to bleaching your knots, sometimes you may notice that your wig, especially on the sides, the hair ends up kind of like, you know, sitting like this way. Like, I don't have to explain it. Hold on. Let me try to get closer. Okay, so see how, okay, we got the hair in the middle where it's like it's just going back, but we got some of the hairs and slanted to the side. Now, honestly, when you are bleaching your hair, you want to make sure that while you're bleaching it, you're just lifting the hair up like this and kind of trying to redirect it so it can stand up straight so that the hair or the bleach won't bleed onto the actual hair. So make sure you do that for both sides so that you know that there's no bleach sitting on top of hair and that you're not getting any um, bleeding in your bleaching process, okay? Also too, when it comes to the bleaching process, you wanna just make sure you let it um, sit so right now I don't got no um, aluminum foil so legit I'm just gonna let it sit and I'm gonna let it sit upwards because like I said again like gravity defies itself so you're gonna let the lace or like the hair sit up so legit you're just gonna be placing it down like this and then just let it do its process you know you don't want it to be facing it downwards like this because then again what comes up must come down. You don't want your bleach to be crashing down onto your... So just monitor it, you guys. Just keep on monitoring it until like you see it changing. And sometimes they don't even take 30 minutes, depending on the kind of grade of hair that you've got already. So just keep on watching it. If you see it turning brown, that's good enough, and you can start like washing it. 
So right now I'm just checking to see if it's, you know, turning. And it's definitely is turning and it's turning fast. And by the way, the kind of color that you're going for when it comes to the knots, you want a golden brownish kind of um, knots, you guys. You don't want it too, too light because then it won't mimic your scalp. So again, 30 minutes should be more than enough time for it to turn. And if you see it turning faster, again, you can wash it out because every hair is different. Alright y'all, so the time is up. The only thing I'm going to do off camera is just rinse it out. So what you're going to do is just rinse it out and I'm going to show you the rest of the process after I come back, okay? Alright you guys, so I went ahead and rinsed it out and this is what I got. So, I'm trying to get a close up of it. These are the knots leash, as you guys can see. It was a big success. Um, still a little brassy, so we're going to go in with the um, purple shampoo, but before we do that, so I did notice, for people that do care, um, so you guys can see the front is bleached perfectly, there's, you know, but for my people that, you know, are, say are going for like, they're trying to braid their front tool and it bothers them at the fact that, um, the knots on the inside didn't bleach as much you can go ahead and re bleach it you guys so that's what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna be lazy because <laughs> I do want to um, demonstrate to you guys that you can bleach it twice so the only thing I'm going to be re bleaching is um, the inside part I guess like um I'm going to be re bleaching not the front because the front is fine. I'm just going to re bleach any, everything that's um, from the um, hairline and back. So I still got some bleach left over. I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it in, slide out. And excuse me while I don't wear gloves. I'm being lazy right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and apply some more bleach only on the parts that didn't get bleached and sometimes it's actually recommended if you that you do um, bleach your knots twice more so the fact that most of the times the first round or first go around everything doesn't bleach and that's perfectly fine you didn't do anything wrong is again it's the hair and it's the knots because sometimes because like in the back the knots are thicker than the ones in the front I believe the ones in the back are like double knotted and the ones in the front are single knotted just to give you that natural look in the front. But yeah, sometimes it takes a longer time for it to process in the back because of how thick the knot is. So you can always go back and re-dye it, you guys. Don't be scared. Do not be scared. It is okay, okay? And that, 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 that just goes for usually like any dyeing process. For the most part, say if you're dyeing your real hair, you usually go through more than one process anyhow. So, just think about it like that. Don't get your panties in a bunch, you guys. You got this. And this is just more so for my extra anal people that want every single knot to be bleached. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to leave it on for again 30 minutes. Or until it starts turning. And to be honest, I'm only getting over here because you can't part nothing over here. So even if, say, um, the knots didn't really bleach that well over here, which it did, you don't really have to worry about it because you're not, you're not, you're not doing anything on that side, okay? I low key really wish I had aluminum foil. I feel like this probably would have made it a little bit faster. But for my people that do have aluminum foil, be free, feel free to use it um, and put it underneath it so it can process a little bit faster, okay? Alright you guys, so as you guys can see, we are fully bleached now, and my sis is looking good. There's still a little bit of bleach residue because I just rinsed it out, but it's okay because we're going to wash it out even more. But as you guys can see, now the knots have taken completely. Alright y'all, so I went ahead and took a bucket of warm water, and um, I kind of wanted to do this process instead of just me putting the shampoo on the hair by itself. Because um, I got crappy uh, lighting in my bathroom. And I wanted to show you guys fully hands-on without me struggling. So, again, 
We're going to be working smarter, not harder. Right now, I'm going to be taking my Shimmer Light Shampoo. Um, it's the purple shampoo, and this will help with the brassiness of the lace. Because as you guys can see, it's a little bit orange and on the brassier side. So, I'm going to go ahead and pour this inside. And you can find the purple shampoo, to be honest, at the beauty supply store or again, Amazon. This cost $10.99 from where I got it from. Probably going to be a different price where you probably get it from. But right now I'm going to go ahead and mix that up into the water. And I was kind of running out, so I decided to bring my blue shampoo. And this is from Joico. And this is to help um, with orange. So this is to help yellow. And this is to help orange. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the both of them. Just so it could tackle both of them. Okay. Now I'm going to dip my wig inside, make sure that it is catching all of those knots. You could dip the whole wig inside. And kind of like low key already, you could kind of see it coming out already as soon as I dipped it in. It's kind of funny. Yeah, we're just going to let that sit for about 15 minutes. Make sure it is fully inside and saturated with our brassy goodness, you know? Alright, and again, 15 minutes. Okay, y'all. So I actually left it on for over 20 minutes. And we are looking but we are looking good, y'all. We are looking excellent. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and just wash this or rinse this wig out. And yeah, you guys, you guys will see me with the finished result, I guess. Okay, you guys. So now, these are the finished results. As you guys can see, we are looking pretty good out here on one of them. show you how in between the parts look like. And if you guys follow my tips and tricks, you should definitely get these results. Oops. Look at me, I'm over here tripping y'all. Just so you have to see. Boom, 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 scalpiana, scalp. <laughs> okay, so. Now, on to the plucking. I look so busted, y'all. Please do not mind me. Do not mind me at all. Okay, you guys. So right now, what you want to do, and honestly, the key to plucking is to have um, good tweezers, um, patience, and also, too, you just want to make sure that um, you put your wig on a mannequin head that actually mimics your head size and the reason why I say that is more so because you want to make sure that your wig is taut like look okay look at how this wig is looking like right now there's no prickles in it there's no because it fits the head size exactly right so you want to make sure that there's no wrinkles and stuff so then when you're plucking you're not um, pulling or like you know accidentally causing holes because there's a little fold right here and you pluck right there and then boom you just created a hole again and also too you just kind of want to have an idea of how it will look like on your head because if you put it on a smaller mannequin head it's not mimicking how it will look like on your head if you get what I'm trying to say so make sure that you put it on a mannequin head 
that fits or mimics the size of the wig cap. And overall, you should get a wig that fits your head too, so. <laughs> okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and T-pin my wig down, because again, for extra security, ain't no, ain't no such thing as being too secure, okay? Boom. And then boom. Excuse my phone, you guys. My hotline is clearly blinging. Alright, y'all. So now on to the plucking. Your lap will be your best friend. And the reason why I say that is, to be honest, plucking is a lot more easier when you do it on your lap versus when you do it on your wig stand. Overall, you just get more control. Alright, so boom, y'all. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Well, a lot of bit. <laughs> Alright, you guys. So now on to the plucking. Now, the way I pluck is like a mixture of how people pluck, I guess. Of like different styles, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you how I pluck, right? You want to make sure that you have your comb. And you also want to make sure that you have your tweezers. You want to make sure that the tweezers are not too sharp but not too dull as well. A good brand for tweezers is Tweezerman, of course. You could also use um, Equate, which is like a generic brand that you could find in, I believe, Walmart. So Equate or just these ones I got from the beauty supply store. There's no name on it, but just make sure that they're pretty brand new. You don't want them too sharp because you don't want to cause holes, okay? All right, so what I do is, mine is a mixture of like how both people, like I guess both, both styles of plucking. Plucking is art, you guys. So, we have the people that go part by part. They part out the part where it's, um, I believe, like, you know, that's like pre plucked and they pluck behind. Once they see that it's not this dense, well, well that it's not dense anymore, then they go ahead and they do it again. And I don't do that way. Reason why I say I, I don't do that one is because I feel like sometimes you end up over plucking. And again, I want you guys to work smarter and not harder. And I feel like at times you don't notice when you are um, over plucking, which is normal, you guys. I even I over pluck up to this day. You know, sometimes sometimes I just get lucky. And then other people will just go ahead and just go behind the hairline and just keep on plucking until they get the density without you know doing the parts and stuff. And what I do is I do a mixture of both. So I'm going to show you guys, alright? Boom. This is what I do. I'm going to go ahead and take my comb. I'm going to go ahead and... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in sections. So I'm going to work on one side, then I'm going to go work in the middle, and then I'm going to go work on the, nether, on the next side. So again, I kind of like split it up into three sections. Just so I'm not all over the place and the process don't take longer, you know? So... Boom, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to go ahead and take out the part that is pre-plucked. Because again, as a beginner, the last thing you want to do is over-pluck the front to the part where you're balding. That is not a cute look, you guys. Mm -mm. Unless you're going for the the little bill look, then by all means, go ahead, you know? <laughs> but alright, so right now I want to make sure I get out every single piece that it is pre-plucked out of my way, just so that you guys can pluck in peace. What I'm going to go ahead and do is, I am going to take my tweezers, and I am going to pluck directly behind. Not in front, but behind. Again, you want to take away the density from the back of the closure, so the of the closure, the back of the front toe, so that it gives the illusion that the front looks like it's you know being like I guess like gradient, like it gives that it gives that gradient effect in the front versus in the back. Because if you're gonna continuously pluck at the front, what you're doing you're taking out the front and then the back is still dense, and then boom, you just created a whole big bald spot. No, again. You want to make sure that you pluck directly behind. So right here. Boom. Right there. Right 
there y'all and what I do is I kind of pluck you want to make sure that you, that you that you're plucking um with the tip down the slant should be at the hair it shouldn't be where the point is at because you're not plucking anything and on top of that too you're going to be able to create holes and we don't want that again slant down make sure that the slant is hitting the lace while you're plucking and what I do is I kind of drag it out a little bit not too much while I'm plucking so I want to show you all right so and what I do is I kind of do like at least five different plucks before I move the hair out the way so I'm gonna show you guys so it's gonna be one two three four five okay got our five boom what I'm using is not the four I would say the forehand of my hand the side of my hand to remove the hair that I am plucking out and this just makes it this what this is actually what makes it easier than using the comb because you gotta pick up the comb and put it back down. Uh-uh. We're gonna save that for later, okay? So again. So behind the hairline, one, two, three, four, five. And I think five is a good amount just to make sure that you're not over plucking. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. And just keep on doing that. One, two, three, four, five. Just keep on doing that. And honestly, I would like to like, within the section that I've cut off, I like to work in subsections. So I'm just going to work mainly over here until I see that there's a significant change and I'm going to move over to over here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, boom, boom. One, two, three, four, five. And like I said, when you're doing it, you want to kind of drag it so you're, boom. You guys, as you can see, we're getting it somewhere. It's looking pre-plucked already, you guys. And honestly, you always want to make sure that you're working with wet hair. You get more hair out. So if you feel your hair drying up, just go in with a spray bottle just full of tap water. Wet it up and then commence. <laughs> so again, just one, two, three, four, five. And it's pretty repetitive, but I'm going to show you guys the whole entire process because I don't want to leave nothing out of you guys, you know, asking me questions on how to do certain things. And I don't know if y'all can see a little difference, but we getting somewhere. And legit, you're just looking for any place that looks dense, okay? So if you see certain areas already looking a little like already pre-plucked, move on more further back, okay? So we're kind of already seeing that this is starting to build out a little bit. Move even further back or just hit places where you see that it is dense. And it's not hard at all. And the reason why I do this instead of like me, um, I guess like parting it in each section is because you see what you're working with and you're not over plucking to the point where, like when you finally pull the hair back because like oh damn I messed up you're seeing everything as it goes okay so it's really foolproof again I want to make sure that everything is foolproof for you guys so y'all gonna be plucking like a pro okay and again remember your hand is playing the place of the comb just so that you have to constantly pick it up and down and do all this extra stuff and in all honesty, if you want to test out to see if you over plucked or not, you can always place the um, the wig on top of your head and see how it looks. 
and if you feel like it's too bald or I mean I don't know how to help you if it's too bald but if you feel like it's too thick, thick put it back to the mannequin head and then continue to pluck and that's all if you want to play it safe but honestly I'd rather my hairline be a little bit thicker than what I would anticipate it for because frontals shed regardless you know frontals aren't made to last forever they're actually a luxury um they're actually a luxury hairstyle they're not even meant to be worn for so long you know so boom we're getting somewhere I think we're getting somewhere Usually I'll play music while I'm doing this, but I don't want to get no copyright strikes. So I'ma just relax and do this for my people without the music. So unfortunate, but it's okay. But for all my impatient people, music is definitely suggested. Just so that you don't catch yourself being so impatient. Alright, so I feel like I've plucked a decent amount for me to comb out the hair. Kind of the annoying part about combing out. Okay. And this is how much hair we lost. It looks like a lot, but in reality, it low key isn't. But it's okay. You're just gonna keep on plucking and plucking and plucking until you get your desired look, you know? Now, if you feel like you trust yourself, you can pluck a little bit longer before you use your for your forehand to push the hair back, you know? Okay. I think I've tackled enough for me to pull the hair back. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna okay. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push this hair back right here on the sides real quick just to see how we are looking. Okay? Alright, I'm gonna wet it. Just to see. Alright. Now, as y'all can see, this side is bougie. This side is looking pretty good. In certain areas, especially in this part, that is still dense. So now we're gonna trust ourselves and we are going to hit the dense area. So I see that right here is looking pretty dense, right? I'm gonna go behind the hairline, pluck that out. I'll probably do it three times. Use my finger to smear it out, okay? See it's still a little bit dense, pluck it out, boom. And again, go in increments. If you don't trust yourself, you guys, do at least one, two, three plucks. That's probably even enough, okay? Boom, boom, okay. All right, it's looking less dense already, okay? On to the next part. Well, actually not. Just move that little piece. Okay, boom, all right. Now on to this part. Remember, behind the hairline. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, using your forearms, push it back. One, two, Just keep on doing it until you see the areas that were dense don't look as dense anymore, okay? And the good thing about plucking after you bleach your knots is because of the bleach, it kind of weakens the knot and it's easier for you to pluck. Which is why everybody plucks before, also plucks, um, bleaches before they pluck, okay? Because again, you want to make the process a lot easier for you, and you want to work smarter, not harder. That is really the goal of this whole entire thing, is to work smarter and not harder. And boom, do you guys see that? We getting some wheel. This place look a little bit dense. Behind. Coming out with your hand. This is looking a little dense. Okay. Boom. 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 All 
Alright, now I think it's time for us to use our comb to comb out and see our progress. And we getting somewhere. We getting, we getting, we getting somewhere. Okay. Perfecto. And to be quite honest, I really feel like this is enough. If you want to go further, you can, but I feel like you're going to risk yourself over plucking and, and essentially creating a bald spot. This is perfect, to be honest. Especially if you want to do your little baby hairs. You could comb out your baby hairs, still have the pre-plucked hairline going on without it looking too bald. So I'm going to leave it like this. Again, you don't want to over pluck. Again, if you feel like it's still not enough or like you want to pluck more, by all means, but that is a risk you are taking, okay? And I'm just going to show you guys the difference between the sides real quick. Hold on, y'all. Look here. This look a little too dense. Um, move that part real quick. So, this is how the pluck side looks. As you guys can see, hold on. This is how the plug side is looking. Versus the unplug side. There's a big difference. Look at that. Boom. Sleekiana. Boom. Elvis Presley. Sleek. Elvis. Sleek. Elvis. Sleek. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys. And to be honest, it's pretty much the same exact process all around. I am going to show you guys how to do the middle part, um, the middle section of the hair. And I'm going to leave this side because it's the same thing as this side, but I do want to show you guys the middle part, okay? So, boom. We get it into it. So again, we went ahead and parted out our um, our pre-plucked hairs, if you want to call it. Got a little dry, so we're going to go ahead and spray it with our spray. Okay. Now again, zoom in, full yolks. Alright, now again, we're going to go ahead and look behind. Not in front, but behind. Not right here, not right here, but right here, okay? Again, you want to give the illusion that the front looks like it's thinning out. So in order for the front to look like it's thinning out, you got to thin out the back. Not thin out the front because then you won't get a bull spot, okay? So, all right. And again, like if you feel like you're getting comfortable, you got your momentum up, you could do longer ones before you use your hand to um, push out the hair that came out back. Okay? You feel real confident. And usually, you guys, honestly, I might be going to lie, you don't have to pluck out as much in the front than how you do at the sides. The reason why I say that, usually, your parts are gonna be around here. Excuse my ashy hands, you guys. Don't, don't mind me, okay? <laughs> All right, so usually your part is gonna go around here, especially with frontals and um, like this, where like there's like a two inch parting side and all the six inches like it's like mostly in the middle. You're not gonna pluck as much, okay? Reason why I say that is you do not wanna have a bald spot in the front, especially if you're doing a middle part or a side part. You don't wanna have so much of a bald spot in the front and everything else looks dense. That's not a cute look. So again, you're gonna pluck out less than how you would on the sides, okay? And in general, most hairlines, healthy hairlines at that doesn't look like as if like it's thinning out, okay? Like yes, you wanna have that gradient effect so it doesn't look wiggy, but you don't wanna have it too thin out to the point where like you look like you're losing your hair. That's not that's not the look we're going for. 
especially if you feel like you are losing hair you're wearing this frontal to you know as a protective style you don't want to look like what you was coming from you know if you get what I'm trying to say I'm not trying to bash anybody but I'm just trying to keep it real with you guys okay so again and as you guys can see you already starting to see a difference Again, we're not plucking as much and you want to make sure that you're not plucking in the same spot okay every single time you're plucking you're plucking in a different area okay that will prevent you ever getting a ball spot legit I'm just going across like that boom 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 behind the hairline boom y'all see that already I don't know if y'all see what I'm seeing but I hope y'all seeing what I'm seeing okay Okay, boom, 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 boom. Honestly, I feel like this is good enough. That's all you need, y'all. Legit. Oh. Now we're going to push the pre-plucked hair back to double check to see how it's looking. Do y'all see that? Come on. Come on, y'all. Full proof. Full proof. That looks even better than what it was looking like before, okay? Again, do not want to have it too thinned out. That's not a cute look at all. I don't know why people go for that look. Especially because I, I know a lot of people are working class people and y'all want to keep these frontals longer than what people actually wear them for, for so with that being said do not plug too much because you're going to kill the longevity of your wig lasting long if you want it to last long okay so please just listen to me okay listen listen linda listen all right so now i'm going on to this little side before i end this video Alright, you see that over here, it's looking a little dense. You can clearly see that line of demarcation between the pre plucked side versus the non pre plucked side. Again, I'm going to go ahead, take our tweezer, slant down. You want to make sure you're getting it behind, okay? And since it's such a small section, I'm only doing like a couple of them. Look, that, that already thinned out, okay? You don't need to pluck so much. Boom. Come on, y'all. This is this is easy, easy. It's gonna take practice. You're probably not gonna get the first time around, but I promise you guys, the practice and patience, y'all gonna get it. Y'all be y'all gonna be plucking like pros, okay? I'm gonna wet it a little bit because I see that it's starting to dry up on me. Cool. y'all see that already come on y'all this is full oh look at that hairline you guys come on come on <laughs> yes you guys this is how we are looking this is all you need this is legit all you need you guys and again once you feel like you see it being you know it's getting a little less dense go a little further back to remove that hair okay and that is it you guys all right y'all so if y'all want to see how it will look exactly on your head and how it look like once you lay it and slay it and stuff because this hair is a little puffy right now so I'm gonna go ahead and use my hot comb I turned it on waiting for it to heat up it's already heating up I'm gonna go ahead and use my hot comb and I'm just gonna press it down so you really get to see how it looks and I feel like you really get to see if you like, I guess, um, overplucked or not, okay? 
But with my method, you guys, this is not over puffed at all. So go on. All right, you guys. And this is how we are looking. Perfectly pre-plugged. Okay. So I'm just going to compare and contrast again with the pre-plugged side versus the non-pre-plugged side, okay? So I'm going to make sure this is down, okay? Baby, are you down? Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let me chill out, y'all. Alright. So, boom. This is our pre-plugged side. Uh, boom, she's looking so cute, so ravishing. Ugh. It's a dream, you know? So beautiful. So beautiful, okay? Alright, and this is Elvis Presley. <laughs> this is the non pre plug side. You guys can see a major difference. A major, major difference. Just look at that difference, y'all. Boom. Elvis. Suikiana. Okay, baby? Listen to him. And. I want to thank you guys for watching episode one of the free lace frontal class. I wanted to bless you guys because I feel like, honestly, with y'all constructive criticism, sometimes they be dragging me in the comments um, through my past videos. But again, that was the past. Y'all honestly taught me that you know I need to perfect my craft. And I just want to thank you guys for just everything, you know, like being there for me through day one when I'm over here covering people's noses and stuff with, <laughs> with, uh, wig cap till now like I feel like I progressed so much in these months and I feel like it wouldn't have been possible with, with, of course without God but also without you guys you know I want to thank you guys so much for that and I feel like I owe y'all you know so and I feel like a lot of these classes be so expensive and not everybody has the money for it you know um so yeah you guys I just wanted to bless y'all this is my little present to you guys and I will be dropping a video hopefully every week on the episodes of like you know doing a free lace frontal class because this takes a long time but yeah you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe to my channel it helps my channel I want to see my Africana fan grow hopefully to a million you feel me I, I, I feel like I'm not asking too much but I hope you guys enjoyed this video like comment subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next segment Deuces. hold up we gotta we got bring this back though Sleeky Sleeky Anna <gasps> it was freshly you feel me like come on why would why wouldn't you want to subscribe to me like come on I just I bodied this come on y'all I freaking body this you guys what the freak yo <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found this very informative. Any questions questions that you do have that you feel like I didn't cover in this video, please ask them. Hopefully I'll be able to cover them in my um, next videos. And I'll see y'all later. <laughs>